Today I'm at Nunnington Hall in Yorkshire, a garden that's run on organic principles by Nick Fraser, head gardener, for over 17 years. The veg plot here is small but highly productive with wonderfully healthy soil and I'm going to find out more about how it's managed. This is the uh, vegetable garden. How long have you been growing here? Well, we've been growing in this garden for about 15 years. Prior to that, it was just used for growing cut flowers for the house. Prior to that, it was the old tennis court. Um, so we stuck with the name The Cutting Garden, even though we now grow seasonal vegetables in here. We also grow some cut flowers. So rather than just call it the vegetable garden, we call it the cutting garden. And you manage it on organic principles, is that a right? Absolutely, yes. And we, we manage it on a pretty much a no-dig organic principles. So that, that means that we are, rather than digging the soil, each year we put a layer of compost onto the surface and then we replant through that surface layer of mulch. And would you, would you recommend no-dig for people at home? Absolutely. Um, I mean, there is a couple of complications with no-dig. You have to be producing a certain amount of compost each year to cover the surface, but I would certainly recommend doing as, as little digging as possible in any garden because it's not good for the soil structure and it's, it's also it's a lot of hard work as well. Yeah, it certainly is, yeah. So the soil, I can see that the compost you're mulching with is really, really nice. So uh, how thick a layer do you put on? We put a layer of two inch, between an inch and two inch layer of compost over the top and that will then be incorporated in by, by the worms and the invertebrates over the course of the season. It will also produce that fertiliser to the plants as it rains that will wash through the, the surface mulch to provide that slow-release fertiliser to, to the roots underneath. And so do you, do you sow seeds and things directly into the mulch? Uh, we don't sow many seeds. Most of the, the, other, the other principle with no dig is it's better to grow as many things under cover as possible in pots or modules so then you can then see if you've had any failures and you've got no gaps. It's a more efficient way of doing it than as one thing is harvested, you take your modules or pots out of the greenhouse and then plant them straight in. So there's never any downtime, you've always got your beds full. Okay, so show me how you plant onions at this time of year. So these are the onion sets. These are immature onions. I'll be putting these in round about six to nine inches apart. There is a top, there is a bottom. It's quite clear to see where the root is and the, the tip of the top is the growing point. Some people just push them into the ground that can damage the bulb a little bit. So I prefer to use a very sharp pointy trowel and just do a little gap and just firm them in so the top is just coming out of the surface. You can just see the surface. Oh yeah. Okay, so they're just really sitting in that mulch layer but they'll root through into the soil beneath. Yeah, they're actually, I'm just digging slightly below the mulch layer, just into the, the soil below. The one danger with the young plants at this age is the little tips that are sitting out the surface, the birds love to pull at those. Yeah. So I do have some netting here and when we're finished I'll roll the netting back over and not only is it the, the pigeons and the blackbirds and the pheasants, we also have a family of peacocks living in the garden and they are keen to pull anything out that I've planted. <laughs> Here we are in the greenhouse and we're going to plant up some broad bean seeds into modules. So this is a, a compost mix that we've made this morning. So this has got some of our own sieve compost from our own compost heap, some of our own sieve leaf mould. It's got a little bit of wool based compost, a little bit of grit and a little bit of sand in there to make a nice friable mix. Oh it's lovely. So I'm going to loosely fill these, these pods, modules. I'm not going to press it down too much, just a little firm, a little tap even off the surface and I'm using these broad bean seeds which is Aquadulce Claudia, a very well known, a good consistent broad bean, quite tall but really nice consistent pods with good sized, good sized beans. They'll actually put on multiple stems so you need to plant them fairly far apart so double rows with about nine inches apart when you plant them out into the garden and it's just one bean for each module. Are you pushing them down very far? I'm pushing them down just about, about an inch into the surface so they're just underneath and I'll just put a bit of friable soil back over the top and, and, and it's as simple as that. Sometimes you put two beans per pot don't you but with something like this they, the, the likelihood is they're all going to germinate. Yeah, you get a really good germination on these so you're probably looking at about 90% germination. So for people who don't have a greenhouse um, can they do this anyway? Where would they sow them? If you've got a, a cool conservatory or you've got a cold frame or even if you haven't got a greenhouse um, 
if you get you can buy those very little outdoor propagators little wooden things with the with the lid that lift up if you haven't got space or, or, or resources for a full greenhouse National Trust gardens can be great sources of inspiration and our gardeners and volunteers are always happy to talk. So why not come and visit one of our places or get the National Trust School of Gardening from our shop.